GPS, voice commands. Say a command. Go f yourself. Command not f***ing accepted. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. As the world goes further down the road of conflict, it becomes more and more likely that there are going to be problems with things like the GPS system or even things like the electrical systems in your car if there was ever an electromagnetic pulse attack. In this video, what I want to talk about is the idea of how to get home if something like that happened. If the GPS system goes down, if the GPS system and your vehicle go down, do you have a plan for being able to get back to your house? Because if you are stranded out in the middle of nowhere, you don't know where you are, you don't know how to get home, especially in the winter season, at the time of this recording, it is winter, that is when people very frequently succumb to the elements. So it's really important to have some kind of a, a plan for that. And it breaks down into two categories. One is what do you bring with you so that you can survive, uh, you know, given that sort of situation. And the other is uh, what do you need to have with you in order to navigate back to your home? Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is what do you bring with you? Because the navigation is what I want to spend most of the time uh, talking about in this video. And the idea of what you want to bring with you is fairly simple. Whenever I leave the house, I go with my EDC bag. And if you want to know what's in my EDC bag, here's a video link to it. You can click on that and get a, a full sense of what I keep in my EDC bag. I take general things that I would need to bring with me if I was going to need to kind of live out of my pack for several hours or up to a day or something like that. So I have that with me. I also have with me climate and season appropriate clothing. Uh, at the time of this recording, it is winter. So whenever I go out, I'm going from one kind of climate controlled area, you know, my home, uh, oftentimes to another climate controlled area, you know, like a grocery store or something like that. Uh, when a lot of people are doing that, what they wear are the types of things that you would wear in those climate controlled uh, environments. And the idea being that, you know, you're hardly going to be outside at all. It's really just walking out to your car and then walking from the car to wherever you're going. So there's not really a big need to have boots and winter coats and all that kind of thing. But there really would be if your car ceased to function and you wanted to get home and it was going to be hours and hours, possibly more than a day, to get back to your home. So it's really important that you bring the types of things that you would need if you were going to be hiking home. You don't have to wear them on you, but to have them somewhere in your car is pretty important. The other thing that I tend to bring with me, uh, and this wasn't something that I've always been uh, bringing with me as kind of an EDC item, but more so lately because of the state of our society at the moment, I do bring a personal protective device. What is legal for me in my area is what I do. I'm not going to go into the specifics of that because the specifics for me are not necessarily going to be the specifics for you. But if you want to bring something with you that would allow you to uh, you know, protect yourself from certain uh, scenarios that might arise, especially if there was some kind of an attack and people are kind of losing their minds and going crazy, that would be an environment where people would be much more prone to be violent than during normal circumstances. So I think it would be a good idea to have some way of protecting yourself. Now, if your body is a weapon and that's all you need, that's fine. Uh, but if you're somebody whose body is not a weapon, uh, you know, people who are you know, of weaker stature or whatever, uh, it's important to have some kind of a force equalizer so that you are not completely at the mercy of you know, whoever would like to do harm to you. So those are the things that I bring with me. An EDC pack, a get home pack, a bug out bag, you know, they're all the same to me. Something like that so that I can travel home, climate and season appropriate clothing, and some type of personal protective equipment. Now the other thing that's really critical is uh, to know which way to walk. Uh, it, I think a lot of people today are really addicted to our phones and our GPS devices where uh, if those things are not telling us where to go, we really don't know where to go. You left a week ago to get the mail. Where have you been for a week? Oh, my phone stopped working and I, I, I kind of got lost. I, but my phone came back on just recently and... Well, where so were I, you? Well, I, I, I turned on my GPS app and I guess I was just across the street the whole time. Oh. So what do I bring with me? Well, I've never stopped bringing maps in my car. There's something that I've always just kind of kept in my glove box in case the GPS broke and, you know, 
It seems like the, the newer the device, the, the, the shorter the lifespan of these things. And every time I buy a new GPS unit, I can expect it to last less and less time. So the idea that I might want to use maps is something that, you know, it, it certainly has come up. I, I have GPS devices that were fine, except they, they're no good when they're in the sun, which is exactly where they are when you're like suction cupping them to the bottom of your windshield in the summertime or whatever. Or I have a GPS device that would just like kind of like you know, go crazy and you know, start flying all over the place and, and lose its signal. So, uh, you know, even if you're not getting attacked by like electromagnetic pulse or sabotage or, you know, given, uh, you know, war and conflict situations, there's all sorts of reasons why you might want to have backup maps in your car. And like I said, they've, they're something that I've always carried with me. Now, it's really important to have uh, two types of map. One is sort of regional maps, so that you have a, a broad sense of the region around you, so that if you're far away from home, you can kind of get back to your home. But as you get closer to your home, you might, uh, like let's say you're driving on a highway and you want to, uh, well, in this case, we're walking on a highway perhaps, we're walking on a highway and we want to kind of get off at an exit. At that point, you're probably going to have to go to some kind of like a local or a regional uh, or a, a smaller than regional map. So it's important to kind of have both of those things. So you have the map that will kind of guide you along the large roads but once you get off those large roads you want to have something that actually has street level information now you can have that just in your phone there are lots of uh, phone apps which are pretty cool and many of them don't require a connection to the GPS uh, or to the data network to work now of course if we're looking at a situation where there was like ele an electromagnetic pulse your phone very well may get fried with everything else but that doesn't mean that it's not a good idea to throw some of those maps on there just in case your phone didn't get fried down in the description below I'm gonna put a link to a um, a software package that I use. It's called like maps dot something something. And the great thing about this one in particular is that you can download the maps and they don't need a data connection to to access any of that stuff. I know with a lot of things like Google Maps, if you don't have that connection to the internet, uh, then you can't get any information. But with this software, you can download the maps. They can just sit locally on your phone and then you can kind of scroll through them, whether the GPS or the um, uh, the data network is working, you know, or not. So that's a really uh, great tool. But again, you know, your phone may not work, so it's really important to have those kind of paper maps. And the last thing that's really critical is to know how to even use maps. Uh, I had grown up with maps and that was kind of the way that I navigated for the longest time. So that, that's just part of uh, how I think. I know a lot of people have trouble with uh, maps. Uh, it kind of always baffles me that someone can have a map and not immediately kind of understand what they're looking at. But if you're one of those people, it's really important that you don't just buy a map and think that that's the end of it. You actually have to know how to use the map. Uh, in terms of the actual tips on how to do that, I, I think that goes so basic that uh, you know I'll leave that up to some other YouTube channel to uh, describe to you how to use a map. But I will talk about a couple of sort of uh, higher level uh, tips and tricks that you can use in terms of orienteering and navigating uh, using a map once you have the basic skills about knowing that like you know this line down the middle is where I am, and then you know if I'm holding the map up, upside down, right is left. And left is right and all that kind of stuff. Once you get past all that kind of stuff, there are some tricks that you can use for kind of orienteering yourself. Now, one thing is if you have an EDC pack, get home bag, you know, a bug out bag kind of thing with you, you might want to have a compass in there. A compass is a great way of just getting a general sense of which direction is north, which direction is south. And if you know that you headed east from your house to get to wherever you're going, you're going to want to head west to get back to it. So that that's an, uh, a useful item that you could throw in there, but it's not necessarily necessary. There are lots of other ways that you can navigate and uh, a, a couple of those uh, are involved just using the, the sun. You know the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west and about midway through the day it's in the south. I'm speaking for the northern hemisphere at the moment. If you're in the southern hemisphere it rises in the east and sets in the in west but uh, during the middle part of the day in the southern hemisphere the sun is more in the northern part of the sky so it really depends on where you are. But if you're in the United States midday around noon the sun is going to be roughly in the southern part of the sky. I say roughly because, you know, we're all in different time zones. We're on one side of a time zone or the other side of a time zone. We have all these things like daylight savings time where at daylight savings time, solar noon is more like one o'clock. And I say more like one o'clock because it's not exactly one o'clock. Kind of fluctuates day to day here, here and there. But the general idea is if it's in the middle of the day, the sun's roughly kind of southish. If it's in the beginning of the day and the sun's rising, the sun is roughly in the east. And if it's the end of the day and the sun's on its way down, the sun is roughly in the west. And if you you kind of have a sense of that you can get a, a basic sense is if you're walking down a road and you know that you're heading in one direction and at some point you kind of need to uh, to go 
in you know, one direction or the other, and you see some road splitting off, if you can stand at that split in the road and you can look at where the sun is, you can get a sense of where that road might be heading. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to head that way forever. Roads twist and turn, especially up here in New England. I think a lot of our roads were uh, devised by uh, a cow and sheep herds as they were kind of meandering through the landscape. So a lot of our, you know, our, uh, our drives are following the paths that cows uh, thought was logical. Uh, but uh, that's a general skill that it would be really important because just having a map doesn't really inform anything if you don't really know what all the directions are in terms of where you are. Uh, other ways of figuring out what, what the general direction is, uh, and this relates to the position of the sun in the sky, is if you have a watch. Now a digital watch uh, is not the kind of watch I'm talking about. I'm talking about an analog watch that has hands on there. Though you can use a digital watch as long as you can imagine an analog watch. Uh, if you have an analog watch on your hands and you take the hour hand, wherever the hour hand is pointing, and you point the hour hand at the sun, wherever the sun is in the sky, halfway between that hour hand and 12 o'clock on your watch is going to be south. And I'll just repeat that one more time. You have an analog watch, you point the hour hand towards wherever the sun is in the sky, and then halfway between wherever that hand is pointing and the, uh, uh, the number 12 on your watch, halfway between, between those two points, is roughly south. Again, it's roughly south because, like, I, all, for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, where you know you're at one side of the time zone, you're at the other side of the time zone. You know, the sun's uh, due south kind of uh, fluctuates. Uh, you know, wh wherever you know high noon isn't always exactly south, but it, it's going to give you a pretty accurate sense of where south is. Let's say you can't see the sun or you don't have a watch, you have no idea what time it is. There's still other ways that you can navigate. One way, uh, and it, it's particularly helpful uh, now in the winter time here. Uh, here in New England, we have lots of snow. Uh, and as you're driving down a highway, if this is a highway that is running in a east-west direction, one of the cool things is you can uh, tell which way is east and which way is west uh, based on the snow accumulation. Because uh, if you can think of a, a highway, it's kind of like a valley here, and if it's going east-west like this, one of these directions is going to be north and one of them is going to be south. And if you want to figure out which direction is north and which direction is south, you look at the hillsides on the side of the road. Now, whichever hillside has more snow built up, you can bet that's probably the side that is facing towards, <laughs> let me think about this, this that's the side that's going to be facing towards the south. Because if the south is in, the, in this direction, over here, uh, the sun from the south is warming this side of the hill more, and this side of the hill is going to be more in shadow. So the south side of a valley is going to have a lot more snow on the south side of it than the north side, because the north side has that southern exposure to see the sun, whereas the south side of the, uh, of the little valley is looking more to the north, so it's not getting that kind of, uh, that, that sort of sun exposure. Now let's say it's not the middle of winter and, you know, that, that's not going to help you. Another way that you can navigate is if you are just in like a residential neighborhood, and this is especially kind of uh, useful once you kind of get off the highway. So like while you're on the highway and you're walking, you can kind of use some of those kind of hints to uh, get a sense of east and west. Also, uh, I should mention highways here in the United States, uh, the way that they are numbered is uh, that odd number roads uh, go north and south. Uh, these are for like, um, you know, interstate highways and things like that. If the road is uh, running generally north and south, it's going to have an odd number. And if it's generally running east and west, it's going to have an even number. So that's another way that you can kind of get a sense of which general direction that road is heading in. But let's say you've gotten off the highways, you're getting down into the, like the regi residential areas, and you're trying to figure out which way is east, which way is west and everything as you are, uh, you know, getting closer and closer to your home. Maybe you're, you're walking through an area. I keep, I keep saying driving because we're, you know, that we're so used to that. When you're walking through an area that maybe you're not quite as familiar with. Uh, well, one way you can do it is if you look on people's homes, a lot of people have uh, satellite TV reception. And again, this is, I'm talking for the Northern Hemisphere here. Uh, those little satellite dishes that are mounted on people's homes for like internet or, or cable te television or whatever, uh, those, it can't be cable television if it's a satellite, can it? It's satellite television, I guess. Um, uh, those are always going to be pointing generally in a southerly direction. Uh, I mean, it's uh, like give or take, like, you know, you know 10, 10, 15, maybe even 20 degrees in either direction. But uh, all the satellites for those are in the southern sky here up in the northern hemisphere. So if you are walking through a neighborhood and you see a bunch of satellite dishes and they're all pointing in that direction, you know that direction is southish. 
and the opposite direction is north-ish. And the last technique for getting yourself home uh, gets into uh, some more uh, kind of higher level kind of orienteering uh, that, gets, uh, that refers to terms like uh, using a handrail and a backstop. And I'm not really going to get uh, too much into those things other than to tell you what the utility of those are. And the utility of some of these uh, techniques is when you are in a situation where you don't know exactly where you are and you don't know exactly you know, where you are in relation to your final destination. You can still make it home under those circumstances, but if you know some of these higher level skills, you can uh, get home in a way where you're making fewer incorrect decisions that are going to get you into trouble later on. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about the specifics of these, but they would be really good to know because uh, it's very likely that you'll be in a situation where maybe you've got gaps in your map and you want to get from here to here, but there's kind of a black hole in the middle. These are some techniques that you can use to try to jump from one known area to another known area, uh, you know, and going over kind of a gap, but to do it in a way where you don't get lost in the gap. Uh, the way that I would suggest learning more about these techniques is actually a video that I've done in the past. It was related to my alien invasion series. Uh, here's a link to that video right here where I talk about a lot of those techniques. If you haven't ever seen the alien invasion series, what it is is it's a series that I did here on my channel where I was talking about uh, general prepping skills and uh, techniques, uh, prepping gear and things like that, but uh, it was set in kind of a fictitious alien invasion to give it kind of a storyline and a plot. A lot of people found it very um, uh, enjoyable to learn prepping that way. A lot of people who thought they were finding a science fiction film were very disappointed because they were, there were a lot of angry comments in the, uh, in, uh, in the comment section about, like, this is all educational. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's all educational. So uh, th in this video, I'm talking a lot about the, a lot of those techniques of like using a handrail, using a backstop. Uh, and I don't mean I don't mean in a literal handrail. It's just a, it's a technique for you know kind of using a map to uh, get yourself from point A to point B if if the the area between the two is a little bit on the hazy side. So I hope you found this video helpful, but whatever you decide to do, make some kind of a plan for the idea that one day you might drive off in your car and you may have to come home without it. Hey YouTube preppers, if you like this video, I know you're going to love this video, which I'm going to remind you about again. It's that video from the Alien Invasion series where I go all over the specific techniques about how to orienteer yourself when there are a lot of unknowns. If you want to be able to navigate through a lot of those hazy, foggy areas, this is the video for you.